In this video, I'm going to expose the flutter sad state. So this was inspired by Iro's blog article on the flutter sad states might not be what you think. So the link is in the description. I will highly recommend you to read it. So for many of us, sad state is the first state management we used for our flutter projects. I think we can agree that we learnt it through the counter app. So however, what you did not know is that we can use the set state differently. Ooh. But before I expose the set state, could you set the state of the subscribe button and the like button to true? I'll wait. Alright, so thank you. So let's get started. So now to change the state in the counter app, we use the set state function. The only way is to have a line of code in the set state function body, not outside of it, right? <laughs> well, not really. If you were to push the counter increment method outside the set state, let me give you a little demo. As you can see over here, the counter will increase when we click on this button. And then we will use this set state over here to increase our counter value. But what if we were to take out our counter just outside our set state? If we were to save this, and now let's restart this, and let's click on the plus or increment button, and this actually work. Oh my goat. I don't have a goat, but well, I think some of you might be mind blown and we think that the set state is a lie. So what does this mean? Well, if you were to look into the set state source code, you could see there is a lot of code, but if you were to just remove the assertions, for example, let us just remove these assertions. And then we also want to remove this error message. And then if you were to remove this another assertion, you could see that there is only two lines of code, which is this function that we got from our void callback. And then at the same time, we have this mark needs build. But this is just basically typecasting, meaning that for this void callback function, we will set the type as dynamic. So it is the same as having this function being run as such. And then we have this element mark needs build. So what is this element mark needs build? So what is mark needs build is basically having to say to Flutter that we are going to rebuild the widget in the next frame. Meaning that if we were to use the set state, and then if we were to have any changes in our value inside our stateful widget, then we will rebuild the widget accordingly. So why not just use the mark needs build? What do we need a set state for? So the reason I'm going to share with you is why I like Flutter because they researched on the developer experience when making Flutter as a UI toolkit or a framework. So correct me if I'm wrong, Flutter is the only framework that employs or have UX researchers or I would say developer experience researchers. So these researchers had done extensive studies to improve the developer experience. And set state was one of their findings. So before the inception of set state, as you guys can see, there was this mark needs build method. However, since it does not require you to add the state changes in the method body, they have found out that the developer uses it as a good luck charm. Meaning that if you're not sure you need it, you just use it. So this can be a problem as people are confused on how to use it properly. If you don't use it properly and you just put it anywhere and everywhere, then you could see that it is a little bit boilerplate and it adds code to your code base, which is not really what we want. So therefore, having it as a method made people less confused on changing state in a stateful widget. So after implementing the set state function, the Flutter team found out that it was actually less confusing for new developers or developers themselves and more and more people are using it correctly. So I would agree with Iro's said article 
that if there was a function that was called Mark needs build, I would be wondering why my friend Mark needs to be involved in building my widgets or my Flutter project. So therefore, would you change how you code scene set state? It's just a function to rebuild the widget state. For example, over here, you could see that this doesn't really make sense because you increment the counter, but at the same time, you set state. So for new developers or developers who have some experience, they don't really get this because this is an anonymous function. So what you tend to do is you will add the line of code to change the states of your stateful widget. So it looks like a code smell, basically meaning that this is as close to not being used because we have a function body, but we are not adding in anything inside our set state function. So in summary, set state is basically a wrapper for you to use it correctly in a way that it makes sense to you. So coding is not only just about code and just making complicated stuff. It also is about the developer experience on how to use it without you scrambling or being confused on how to use it. And by having this set state, you will probably put all of the different things that you need to change inside the set state anonymous function body. And that's why I really like about Flutter is because the developer experience in Flutter, I believe is one of the better ones out there because they really put in the effort to make sure that the API or the Flutter framework is easy to use and understand because we can concentrate our effort to build beautiful designs and animations. So if you like this video, can you set the state of this like button to true? And if you want more of this video, you can also set state the subscribe button to true. That's it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.